Hello and welcome. This is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary here in Seattle Public Schools. Today we're going to have a fifth grade reading lesson and in your Making Meaning book this is your ninth unit and this is the third week and this is day one. This unit is all about synthesizing which means bringing together lots of different ideas. This week we're going to be talking about opinions. Opinions are not like facts because you can't exactly prove an opinion to be true or false. Opinions are what you believe about a certain subject. We want to think about how we can express our opinions respectfully. And almost everyone has been in a situation where you say something about a thing you really like and another person doesn't feel the same way. And sometimes they are a little bit rude about it. So we're going to work on not insulting anyone or their opinion. Listen to everyone's opinion, even if you don't agree. Use phrases like, I understand your point, but in my opinion. And allow for people to have different opinions other than your own. It's a good thing we just reviewed respectfully expressing opinions because we're going to read an article today called The Pros and Cons of Year-Round Schools. If you don't remember, pros means reasons for something and cons are reasons against something. First, we're going to skim the article. And skimming an article is when you read the title, and all the different headlines and subsections. Take about 30 seconds and skim the article by yourself. What do you think this article is going to be about? You probably guessed that this will be about the different reasons for and against having school all year round with no summer break. We're going to start reading here. The pros and cons of year round schools. While most schools follow a traditional school calendar, and traditional just means normal, while most schools follow a traditional school calendar, with a two to three month summer break, some schools, year-round schools, follow a different calendar and don't have a traditional summer break. In the 2006-2007 school year, there were about 3,000 year-round schools in the United States educating nearly two million students. Are year-round schools better for kids? Before we examine the pros and cons of this matter, let's answer another question. What is a year-round school? What is a year-round school? Like a traditional school calendar, a year-round school calendar has about 180 days of school in a year. The difference is that year-round schools stretch out those 180 days over all 12 months of the year. Instead of the traditional two to three months summer vacation, year-round schools have several short breaks. The most common year-round schedule is the 45-15 plan, in which students go to school for 45 days and then get a 15-day break. They follow this pattern throughout the year. We're gonna to turn to a partner now. And your partner can be a friend or a family member that's right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal. And it can also be someone you're calling on an imaginary phone. Also remember, if you're comfortable speaking a language other than English, please feel free to speak in whatever language you like. But I want you to turn to a partner and ask, what have you learned about year-round schools so far? You may have said that year-round schools don't actually have fewer days in the year or more days in the year, 
It's the same as a traditional school. And the biggest difference is that there are more breaks. Let's keep reading. Pros. Let's look at some of the arguments in favor of year-round schools. Less summer brain drain and more time to learn. Research shows that over the summer, students forget some of what they learned during the school year. In one study, researchers at the University of Missouri and Tennessee State University found that test scores were on average at least one month lower when students returned to school in the fall than when they left in the spring. Students who go to a year-round school avoid this summer brain drain. And brain drain just means you forget things that you haven't learned in a while because you're at summer. They avoid this summer brain drain. Do students learn more by going to school year round? Researchers disagree on the answer to this question. Because year round schools keep the learning process going throughout the year, some people argue that students will learn more in a year round school. In a 2009 report on year-round school calendars and traditional school calendars, researcher, researcher Jenny Rule wrote, in summary, it is reasonable to conclude that students attending year-round schools were likely to perform as well, if not better, than their peers in traditional nine-month programs. And their peers just means other students like them if not better than their peers in traditional nine-month programs. Schools save money. Year-round schooling can save money. Schools on a year-round schedule can multi-track students so that while some of them are in school, others are on break. This means schools can enroll up to 33% more students. This multi-track system reduces the need for building new, new schools due to overcrowding. For example, Florida's Marion County School System estimates saving more than $12 million in construction costs because the district switched to multi-track year-round schooling. More flexibility for families. And flexibility just means choices. More flexibility for families. The traditional summer break can be a burden on a family's time and finances. Most parents cannot take time off from work for two or three months to be with their kids, and childcare is expensive. The shorter, more frequent breaks, and more frequent breaks just means breaks more often. The shorter, more frequent breaks in year-round schools give working parents more flexibility in deciding when to take time off and how to provide childcare. What arguments are made in this part of the article? And what evidence supports those arguments? Turn to your partner. You might have said that people argued that brain drain, kids forgetting things over the summer, is a really strong argument for year-round schools. And the evidence for this is studies that have shown that students perform better in year-round schools than traditional ones. Maybe you looked at these two paragraphs and said that schools saving money is a good reason for year-round schools. And the evidence for that is this school in Florida, or this district in Florida, that saved all this money by having multi-track year-round schools. Or lastly, maybe you said that more flexibility for families is a good argument for year-round schools because parents can have more choices about how to take time off of work. Let's keep reading about the cons. Cons. Now let's look at some of the arguments against year-round schools. No proven academic, no proven gains in academic achievement. 
An important argument for year-round schools is that attending school year-round will likely lead to gains in academic achievement. In fact, although many studies have been done on the impact of year-round schools and traditional schools on student achievement, the results are inconclusive. And inconclusive means we just don't know. The results are inconclusive. Some studies show gains, others do not. For example, a study released in 2013 showed that there was little evidence of increased achievement by students in year-round schools. No much-needed summer break. The longer summer vacation of a traditional school calendar gives students lots of time to unwind. And unwind just means relaxed. It gives them lots of time to unwind, connect with friends, and be with their families. It provides older students with opportunities to find summer work and earn money for college. It gives younger children time to attend summer camps, time that students who attend year-round schools do not have. One expert, Dr. Peter Scales, says, the biggest plus of camp is that camps help young people discover and explore their talents, interests, and values. Most schools don't satisfy all these needs. Kids who have, these, who have had these kinds of camp experiences end up being healthier and have fewer problems. Year-round equals expensive. Some school districts have found that switching to year-round schooling has cost them more money. Year-round schools have to provide air conditioning and other utilities all year long, and there is more maintenance to do because buildings are being used more. And maintenance just means things like fixing different parts of the school. There is more maintenance to do because buildings are being used more. In her first year as superintendent of Tempe Union High School District in Tempe, Arizona, Shirley Miles won praise for eliminating the high school's year-round calendar and its added costs. Are year-round schools a good idea? There are strong arguments to be made on both sides of the question. What do you think? What arguments does the article make for having year-round school? We're going to make a chart where we have the pros and cons listed. First, it says there's less summer brain drain and more time to learn. The article also said that schools would save money with year-round school. And it said there was more flexibility for families. Hmm, what about the cons? It said there was no proven gains in academic achievement. No long summer break to relax, be with friends and family, or go to camp. And it said the costs of running year-round schools are greater. Hmm. So now that we've read this article, what do you think? Are you for or against year-round schools? And what reason would you give to support your answer? Hmm. Well, you could say, in my opinion, I am for year-round schools because there would be less summer brain drain and kids would learn more. And you might explain that by saying that you always forget things about math whenever you go home for summer for three whole months. You could also say something like, in my opinion, I am opposed to year-round school. The reason I think that is, there hasn't been any proven study that kids actually have ac more academic achievement in year-round schools. And you could back that up more by saying that you don't feel like you forget very much when you go home for the summer. Now it's time for your independent daily reading. Here are the instructions, and pay attention because there might be more than you're used to. First, you're going to pick anything you want to read. 
You're going to read for 10 minutes and think about the questions about independent reading that we have over here on the right side. Then use those questions to produce opinions about what you read. Write your opinions on sticky notes or squares of paper if you don't have sticky notes. And after 10 minutes, you're going to reread and write down evidence to support your opinions. You're going to do this three times. So you read for 30 minutes or more. I'm going to give an example of how you're going to do this with the book Dragons in a Bag by Zeta Elliott. Chapter one. Mama strokes my cheek with her finger before pressing the doorbell. I feel tears pooling behind my eyes, but I, will, but I will them not to fall. Mama has enough to worry about right now. It's only for a little while, Jackson. I'll be back before you know it. I nod and look up at the peephole in the door. If I look down at my feet, the tears will fall and my nose will start to run and Mama will know I don't want her to leave me here. So I'm going to get out a sticky note. And I'm just going to write my opinion. And I'm going to say, hmm, let's look at those questions about independent reading. I'm going to answer the third one. This story makes me feel I'm going to wait to give evidence. Mama's biting her lip and tapping her toe nervously. She presses the doorbell again, letting it ring longer this time. We both hear someone stirring and cursing inside the apartment. Mama laughs nervously and says, Ma curses like a sailor sometimes, but she's a harmless old lady. She's fun, too. You'll like her, Jax. I never even knew I had a grandmother living in Brooklyn. Mama never mentioned her before. Sometimes Mama hides things from me, or that's what I let her believe. Mama thinks I don't know our landlord's trying to get rid of us. She takes down the eviction notices he pins to our front door, but I still know what's going on. Today, Mama has to go to court. I want to go with her, but Mama wants to leave me here instead. A heavy body shuffles toward the door. Mama and I wait patiently as it lock at least three locks are turned. The chain stays on and lets the door open just a crack. I cringe as a raspy voice asks, what you want? Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to get another post-it up here. For another opinion. Now I'm going to answer that second question. Are the people or characters interesting and why? And I'm going to say the character Ma is interesting to me. Okay, so I just read and put down opinions after I read, and I wrote those opinions on sticky notes of squares of paper. And now I'm going to go reread and try and find evidence to support those opinions. Let's see. So my first opinion was, this story makes me feel depressed. So let's look back at the text and see why I had that opinion. Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna write the reason I think that is, Jackson is crying and his mom is leaving him. Okay, 
I have my opinion and I have evidence. Let's go to my second opinion. I said the character mom is interesting to me. I'm going to reread and look here and try and find. Oh, okay. So it says here, Ma curses like a sailor. Which is kind of funny to me because I don't really think of grandma saying a lot of bad words. So I'm going to write. The reason I think that is. She says lots of inappropriate words. Hmm, there was something else I remember, too. Oh, yeah. It says over here that Mama never mentioned her before. I think that's pretty interesting. Because why would she not mention to her son that he had a grandma? So, I'm going to say, and Mama never told Jackson about her. All right, let's get reading. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website.